Vansell says, of course, all men have the law of non-contradiction in common, because that's an ordinance of God. That's God's law. And they live in God's world, so they must think in terms of that law. But, but non-Christians do not believe in such a universe. They believe that man is autonomous, that he's surrounded by a world of pure contingent factuality, that the, everything is random. This is a chance universe. And that he himself must seek to impose order upon pure factual contingency by means of the laws of logic that exist in themselves. Ultimately, the non-Christian says, this is a chance universe, but my mind doesn't think in terms of chance. My mind thinks in terms of logical laws. So the universe is chance, but I'm going to think about it in terms of logical laws. So that amounts to me imposing my way of thinking on the nature of reality. Accordingly, the Christian, having opposite views of reality, has op opposite views of the nature and function of logic in relation to reality. All gods are imaginary. Fascinating. Listen. I was so much younger than that now. I was so much younger than that now. I was so much younger than that now. Okay, well, God doesn't exist, right? Let's face it. Either he does or he doesn't. Well, that's true. At this point in time, he doesn't. Okay, well, hold on a second, because there's been no proof other than what people have said. All right, let's test the merit of your claim. I haven't finished. Why you oh, okay, go ahead. The second problem, the fact that there's no place in reality for a deity, no need for a deity, and in fact, impossible for a deity to exist. Okay, good. So you made three clear points here. Let's start with the first one. The absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Well, the third one was there's no need for a deity. And I'm, what was the second one again? There's no place to crowbar creationism into the natural world. Three very broad claims. The substance of your first claim can be distilled to the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Do you agree with that representation? Can you elaborate for me on that one? Sure. If I say that there's no elephant in my living room, correct. in the absence of seeing a normal elephant, we can correctly conclude that there is no elephant due to the absence of evidence that would necessarily be there. Correct. I'd like to on one thing to that. It is very possible that an elephant could be in your living room. A normal elephant. However, unlikely, it's still possible, right? Could be. That's not the question. I just want you to acknowledge the possibility. Sure, sure, sure. Well, it's possible. Okay. Yeah. okay, but... So that already negates your first point. No, it doesn't negate my point at all. I don't even know what the foggiest thing you're talking about. I'm because you're telling me, absence of evidence, it's still possible for the elephant to be in the living room. There's still no evidence for God. The only evidence the, the, you have is what other people are okay. talking I haven't made any claims to you. I'm responding to your claim. There is no God because there's no evidence of God. I'm not saying that there is no God because there's no well, evidence I heard you God. say it. What I'm saying is there is no God because God is impossible. You made three claims. There is no God because there's no evidence for God. There is no God because God is not possible. There is no God because there's no need for God. Yeah. We're going over your first argument. There is no God. There's no evidence for God. We're tackling these one at a time. Fair enough. Now, the first argument that you're making can be summed up as the absence of evidence is evidence I, I, of absence. I don't understand why you're coming with that. All I can say is that a concept of a God related to everybody in words and some kind of pictures and, and whatnot is in itself not evidence for anything. It's just a concept. It is not the case yes. that the absence of evidence is evidence of absence in all cases, only some cases. Do you agree that the absence of evidence is evidence of absence in all cases or some cases? You are making the absence of evidence is evidence of absence argument. Let's go with it. However you'd like to bend it. You are assuming in the absence of certain evidence, you can conclude there is no God. You must stipulate what the necessary evidence of God is. Oh, okay would be. then. Sure, I could do that. If God exists, we would all be living in a much 
different world. God would be evident to everybody. We wouldn't be having a great debate. We would be living lives in all the graciousness that God has bestowed upon us. We would be grateful for everything we did. There would be no animosity or acrimony between humans. Animals would get along with humans quite well. There'd be a lot of love and forgiveness, understanding of what's going on. There'd be no question marks. Everything would be totally evident, whatever you see. How do you know any of this? How do you know that that would be necessarily the case, that were there to exist an eternal entity that huh? possesses intelligence and consciousness and created a world in which biological beings live on a planet? How do you know... God would have all of those properties and attributes. How do you know that a God would make a world like this? That would be the evidence for me. I told you what the evidence for God would be. Okay, good. I, how do you know that that would necessarily be the case? Because that's my concept of what okay, God would Okay, I understand that it is your concept, but how do you know that that would necessarily be the case were there to be a God? Because it would be self-evident, just like mountains are self-evident, just like skyscrapers are self-evident, just like microbial life is self-evident. You are giving me a circular argument. Not. You're assuming the thing that you're setting out to prove. You have just committed... Hey, listen, circular. talking about assuming, Mr. God Believer. Sydney, I am analyzing your claim. How do you know that were there a God to exist that created uh -huh. the universe, things would be a certain way? Necessarily. You would have to stipulate that it would necessarily be the case. No, no, I don't. Support you. You, no, you, you, I do not. Okay, no, no, good. No. Now you're introducing a good. complication because you're stuck in a corner. Would that evidence yourself. necessarily mm -hmm. exist or not? That evidence, evidence would evidence. necessarily exist for me to call it evidence. No, I didn't ask you that. I said, would those world situations necessarily... Yes, absolutely. How yes. do you know that? Because I have a brain and I can deduce things and then I can make inferences just like you can. How did you infer that there would be a certain state of affairs necessarily well, okay. were there to be a God? Firstly, God is good. How do you know I'm that? I'm asking you. I'm not making any claim. I'd like to at least start from a premise that we agree on. From a purely philosophical standpoint, yes. we could agree on an operational definition of God. Sure. We would sure. define God as an eternal, non-contingent entity that has no beginning, that possesses the power to initiate the conditions. That's impossible. See, I, I can't agree with you on that one. Why would an entity that has no beginning, that possesses intelligence, be impossible? Because it's impossible to have no beginning. Do you believe that everything exists has a Every cause? No, existence is infinite. Okay, how do you know that? Because the opposite is impossible. The reverse of existence is impossible. Uh, what you just said was undecipherable. We've got to understand that existence is the only status that's possible. Existence. I'm not advocating that nothing exists. It's impossible for nothing to exist. In your view of reality, does everything that does exist have a cause? Of course. So there has to therefore be, to be consistent, an infinite regress of causal sequences. Infinite, exactly. I'm going to give you a very simple thought oh. experiment. It will demonstrate whether your idea is consistent or not. Oh, good. You and I are immortal. We are in a spaceship that has unlimited fuel. Yes. And we are going to go to planet X. We're going to leave planet Earth, and we are going to visit planet X. Mm -hmm. Now, the distance between Earth and planet X is not finite. The distance is infinite. Will we ever arrive at planet X? Okay, hold on, let me get these facts straight. Firstly, you say, we won't run a fuel and we'll never die. Yeah, yeah, we're okay, immortal. So okay. Will the distance between Earth and planet X is infinite? That right there makes no sense. Why? Because you're taking planet X, which is a location, and you're saying is infinite, which is impossible. Oh, are actual infinities impossible? No, infinity is absolutely real, but the location oh, oh, of really, an object really? in infinity but, is impossible. Oh, David, 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 David Hilbert, David Hilbert, Sydney, David Hilbert, greatest no, mathematician of the 20th century. David Hilbert, okay, David no, Hilbert, I'm going to give you a quote from one of the world's most renowned mathematicians. David Hilbert said, infinities are nowhere to be found in the natural world. Well, you don't understand. Infinity is not a noun. Have you ever observed an infinity? 
Oh, Darwin's you dead. Said, really you fucking said. idiot to entertain questions like that. I told you that existence is infinite. Prove me wrong. Come on. That is a fallacy. It is not incumbent upon me to prove that you are wrong when you assert that a certain case is true. Yes, yes. If you assert that God exists... Sydney, I don't mean to be disrespectful to you, but you need to start reasoning like an adult, Sydney. You're all over the map in case of your reasoning. Because I don't reason like a theist, so I'm not an adult. Okay, you said that <laughs> if a god existed, that we would necessarily see world peace. If kind a of god thing. existed, we'd see this god. That's really what I'd say. I haven't given any attributes to any god. Maybe. You're all over the map in your responses. So Actually, I'm not. I'm just interrupting you. Any god, under the definition that we gave, would be evident. You still have not told me, how do you know that you would necessarily see these situations? That is probably the dumbest question you've ever asked me in my life, or asked anybody in their life. And I'll tell you why. Because if you ask me what would the world be like if God exists, and I tell you, and you say, how do you know? That's equivalent to all this scripture coming at me, and all the attributes of God that have been thrown at me over the years, and me saying, how do you know? You just don't. You make your assumption on the facts that you're given. I was asked the question, how would I know if God exists if there was one? I told you, to you, that's not an acceptable response. I don't understand why. How I know is inconsequential. Why should I accept your claim if you can't tell me the basis that certain things would be visible? The same reason that I can't accept your claim if you can't tell me how you know. S S Sydney, you're floundering terribly. You cannot support your claim. No, actually, you did quite well. It's embarrassing. I'm sorry that you're Sydney. embarrassed. I didn't say I'm embarrassed. Yes, you did. It was embarrassing for me. Would I not be embarrassed? Okay. Do you think interrupting me makes people think that you're making a good case for your atheism? Yes, I do. No, they don't. Well, have you asked? It's just making your representation of atheism look very bad. Oh, my representation of atheism actually means absolutely nothing in the big picture, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's take a look at the first point. Sydney has completely failed to demonstrate. He oh, I did not fail. Oh, don't it, tell it, me I failed. I'll be I glad fail. to give you as much time on the microphone. As oh, I'll bet. Now, Sid Sydney has failed to demonstrate that he would observe certain states of affairs necessarily. He has only claimed that this is how he personally has conceived of what we would see or what state of affairs we would see. But he hasn't demonstrated how he conceives of a God, why that would necessarily be the case. Now, in the case of the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. The critical idea in an argument like that is that the evidence would necessarily be observed. If the evidence is not necessarily observed, then one cannot make the argument the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Only in the case that said evidence would necessarily be observed. You see a mountain, you can't necessarily ignore it. So, yes, it will be necessarily observed. No, you have not demonstrated... If it exists... I'd see it. You'd see it. Everybody okay. would see it. No, you you would not. There are there are things in existence that we do not see. Absolutely. Okay. I'll need a okay, microscope good. to see something. So, so your claim that you would necessarily see certain states of affairs were a God to exist yes. has not been substantiated or demonstrated. In it your doesn't case. have to be. Existence means everybody knows about it. If the Taj Mahal exists, it doesn't exist only for those who believe in Are there things that exist that you don't see? Like what? The uniformity of nature. <laughs> How is that a thing? Do you believe that the uniformity of nature is a reality? Do you know what the uniformity of nature actually is? The uniformity of nature could be characterized as the concept of the laws of physics and chemistry. I don't see how that's relevant whatsoever. Well, you're maintaining that those things that exist, we would necessarily see them. And Absolutely. I'm asking you, are there things that do exist that you cannot see? There are things in my imagination which exist in my mind that I cannot see in reality. Yes. Good, good. Then, then you have just contradicted yourself. Oh, good. Show me how. You claim that if God existed, we would necessarily see him. But you have just admitted that there are some things that exist that you cannot see. That's right, like things that I imagine in my head. You would have to demonstrate that were a God to exist, mm -hmm. we would necessarily see that God. Why would I have to demonstrate that exactly? 
Because that's a claim that you made. I made a claim that if something were to exist, I'd be able to see it. And you say to me, I should prove that claim? Your opening argument is that the absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Can you said all- I'm going to ask you whether you agree or disagree with my question. When one makes an argument like that, does the evidence necessarily have to be observed? The evidence necessarily has to be observed, yes. Good. Can you please explain to me and everyone else listening sure. why we would necessarily see a certain state of affairs were a God to exist? Well, if the claims of those who say a God exists were to be substantiated, we'd have to be able to say, you've claimed this God exists and X, Y, and Z is happening because God exists. I can claim that X, Y, and Z is happening without God having to exist. And everything that happens, I'll make that claim. So if you're going to come and say to me, in order to see God, you need evidence, and if you have no evidence, it still doesn't mean that there's no God, then you're not making any sense. How do you know that you would necessarily see a certain state of affairs were a God to exist? If a God were to exist, it's got nothing to do necessarily with the state of affairs. If God were to exist, we would be able to observe God. How do you know that? Just like I know that if there were such a thing as a supernova, we'd be able to observe it, to see, to show that it exists. If there was such a thing as gravitational waves, we would eventually be able to show you that they exist, even though they've only been predicted. Correct? Okay. Um, are there astronomical phenomenon that currently exist that we don't currently observe? Probably. I don't know. You know, this is a very big universe, my friend. Are there things that exist, but we do not see them? That's a crazy question, because in order to know that they exist, they would have to exist. Were there things in existence that were unobserved 300 years ago? There's things in existence that are unobserved now. Okay, good. So it is not necessarily the case that were something to exist that you would see it. It's necessarily the case that were something to exist, we would see it, we would be able to detect it, or we'd be able to verify it, yes. You cannot demonstrate that case at all. Sure I can. Electricity exists, I can demonstrate it. Gravity exists, I can demonstrate okay. it. Electromagnetism exists, uh, uh, okay. I can demonstrate it. There's a Sydney. lot of things that you don't see that exist that I can show you. We're talking about making an observation. Detection in the realm of empiricism involves extrapolation and inferences. Detection does not only include observation. Now you're changing your scenario from observation to inferring that something exists. Oh, am I? Yes. Inference and observation. Uh, In all due respect. The, The phrase is with all due respect. With all due respect. Thank you for correcting my grammar. I always appreciate those who correct my grammar. Mm -hmm. You have not substantiated your case that there is no God due to the fact that there is an absence of evidence. In order to support that type of reasoning, you have to demonstrate that a certain state of affairs would be evident necessarily, not Mm -hmm. possibly or maybe. If it is not necessarily so, then an entity can exist without your short laundry list of what would be evident. So you have not demonstrated that we would necessarily see something were a God to exist. You haven't demonstrated that at all. The first of your three arguments, let me just finish and you can jump on. Your first argument, which is the absence of evidence, is evidence of absence, has not been demonstrated in the least. You have not demonstrated other than that is how you personally conceive of them, what the evidence or state of affairs would necessarily be. So your first line of reasoning has not been supported. Now, would you like to go on to the second line of reasoning? Yeah, finish up. Okay, I've already demonstrated that your first line of reasoning has not been supported. Your second line of reasoning that a God is not possible. Could you please support that? Sure, I could support that, of course. There there is an absolute, complete, non-support of your first line of reasoning. Now, your second line of reasoning is that a God is not possible. So could you please elaborate on why a God is not possible? Sure. But firstly, your summation of point number one actually is not a summation whatsoever. You haven't made your point. You need to brush up on your reasons for why point number one is not true, because it certainly is. Point number two, why is God impossible? 
First, a quick definition with reference to this God. This God that I'm talking about is the same God that was just by himself, nothing physical, and then created the physical world miraculously in certain stages. Are we on the same page there? That was very confusing to me. Why is the concept of a God not possible? For the simple reason that God would have to be created. In the very beginning, we established that everything has a cause. No, I don't make that claim. That was one of the very first things we were talking about. I asked you a question. I did not assert that everything has a cause. You did good, not argue good, that good. point. That's right. I didn't argue that point. Now God would have to have a cause. Can you tell me how do you solve the problem of an infinite regress of causal succession? Existence is infinite. There's no beginning. There's no end. It's circular. One loop. The issue of existence being infinite, what does that mean? Infinite material particles? I'm not saying what I don't know. All I'm saying is that before the, the universe that is our reality began, the cause that this universe is the effect of is a physical cause. It's not a cause with consciousness. It's not a cause with intelligence. It's just physics. That's it. Physics does not have conscience. Can an infinite series be crossed over or traversed, Sydney? Oh, here we go again. Don't start that with me. I've been there with you with this one already. Can an infinite series be crossed over? What you're going to say now is if infinity is true, then you can traverse from one period of time to another, and then you'll say if infinity is true, then that is impossible, and therefore infinity is debunked. I know that's your argument, and it makes no sense at all. Can an infinite series be crossed over or be crossed over or be crossed over?